Hey guys, so following on from the last video that I did, just showing a, a short update. Um, it, it took me a little while to get my power wall just fully up and running again. Um, and part of that was the BMS. So I thought it'd be quite handy just to do a short tips and tricks for the DIY BMS. This is a, by no means an exhaustive list or anything. And some people may think, well, some of these things are obvious or, or this, that and the other. But it, we're all prone to mistakes, myself totally included. And um, so I just thought I'd share with some things that I've picked up uh, along the way. And some things that I've observed on the open monitor forums and everything like that. Um, so I've made a few notes. So I'll try and keep it as concise as I can. Um, the first thing is the version of the board you're using. There's been a couple of revisions of the PCB. Um, the this PCB was the original one that um, Stuart uh, Pitway uh, produced. Um, that then had a ever so slight revision because one of the traces on the back for the power resistor. Um, was particularly thin which Adam Welsh had pointed out so then Stuart had modified that to have a greater thickness I'd show you but because I did my boards in white when I purchased them it was <laughs> it's made it extremely hard to see but you, basically it's this trace here it's extremely thin um, and then that was beefed out um, both of these in green would have shown that better um, since then, the uh, board has been produced, which is a slightly smaller version. Um, I believe Nick Sheffield did a, a, a lot of work on that. Um, and that's just con condensed things down. Um, but what it's also allowed to do is, I believe there was a, an issue with the Adam chip. It was slightly um, reversed, as it were. Um, so I think it will work better on the smaller revision of these boards. Um, one added benefit is that on the smaller revision of the boards also the connectors for the I squared C cables has both the small 2mm pitch but also 2.54mm pitch which in all honesty I think 2.54 would have been better from the start and that allows it's just it's easier and it's cheaper there's a lot more products out there that are 2.54mm um, so that's one thing to watch out for. Um, so yeah, basically, I don't have one of the sm smaller boards, unfortunately. Um, Functionality-wise, bar the slight reversal of the Adam chip, which it still works either way. Um, it's just, I believe it works more reliably on the, the, the newer version. There's no great functionality difference. Um, it's still AT1085, still using that Adam chip. Um, everything else is on there. So you're not missing out by an having these boards um, and I think to be honest it's possibly what I'm gonna stick with for now I think I'm gonna try and get my whole hands on some of the small ones though but just to see for comparison um, but functionality wise they should be identical um, on the subject of the interconnect cables that's something you do need to um, be careful with um, I went through various iterations this is a uh, set of cables that um, a cable I produced myself um, you'll notice the data lines are um, crossed there in an effort to try and reduce um, some of the issues I had with the cables um, this should be not too long in all honesty it's about 30 centimeters but you are better with a shorter cable in all honesty um, the way I purchased these they were factory made ends and then I've soldered them together so there shouldn't be any issues there but I was still a bit weary and was the problems I had so what I did was I went for factory made cables um, straight through um, and these did I didn't use them initially because it took me a while to find them I'll put a link down below um, and then what you've basically just got to do is swap the pins so the middle two pins get swapped and the outer pins get swapped um, and you're going to make sure that you get that right otherwise things aren't going to connect and there's always the danger of damaging something on that note it's always worth checking when you buy your cables that you're buying the correct version um, these are some 2.54 millimeter versions um, which are 10 centimeters as well um, and you notice it's still a nice big bundle because I wasn't able to use these 
So <laughs> if I'd had the newer version of the board, um, that would have been fine, but that didn't exist at the time. So just take a check when you're ordering um, and to make sure. Um, but like I say, I'll put a link to these down below. Um, one of the reasons that I went down the route of doing these twisted cables was because of interference. Um, I discovered that I had a lot of interference um, and that was with, in the end, tracked down to my inverter. So I don't think it was the actual, the cable, the way it'd be made up, but that's why it's twisted and I went through those steps. So that's just another tip in that if you're having issues, um, just take note of what other devices are around because I can, I well sorry, I was able to switch my inverter on and it would just kill the board, communication between the boards completely. So the boards would function independently and they were still running, the Wemos was still running, but they wouldn't talk at all. Um, I covered that in a previous video and what that ended up being was a power cable, um, which wasn't shielded, um, which led from the inverter to the, um, the mains. Um, swapped that out with a different shielded cable with um, ferrite uh, cores on the end I believe they're called um, and that that solved the issue for me so that's definitely one to, to, to keep out and I think you can't go wrong with a pre-made cable the shortest distance um, you can get. Um, on the subject of cables the next thing um, is one of these things that people will say should be obvious but actually doesn't always turn out that way um you know you find you make your board up you spend a lot of time and um, you know these are fairly intricate um not quite uh all four um levels like what some people are doing but they are fairly intricate especially hand soldering take a long time to do you get your your leads that you've purchased which is your, your two millimeter fly leads you know you're gonna connect that to your battery at the other end you plug it in and then you end up with issues and that's exactly what I had and I burned up a few tracks on that thin track that I mentioned now that wasn't due to the thickness of that track although it wouldn't have helped what it is if I show these I bought from two different suppliers and it might seem obvious let us see but you'll see there the polarity is different and those were from the manufacturer now there's no specific standard the GST connector to say that it has to be in a certain way um, but I did kill a board by just not paying attention plugging it straight in so it's one of those that just really take care you know the top top one here it's labeled on the board is uh, positive so it should be this one here um, but just to take heed of that and be careful um, yep and the next one is hand solder versus using thermal paste and then doing it um, in something like a reflow or I did all that with a hot air gun. But one issue I did encounter was getting the correct amount of paste on the boards. When you get just the right amount on, it, it, it's great and it works well, but then if you don't get enough, then it's hard to tell sometimes and you end up with a a dry joint so then I've had to go back over some joints sometimes and uh, put a little bit solder on uh, and then uh, touch them up that way so and the issue was because of the solder mask I was on the stencil I was using now this worked great and it's far far better than having nothing um, but 3d printed for accuracy is not really the way to go especially on the Adam chip and the um, 710 regulator and a couple of the others. Um, I think that's what did lead to not enough paste getting um, squeezed out. So one recommendation is if you're going to go for the reflow oven or using a hot air gun is to maybe pony up the cash when you order your boards and get a stencil done at the same time. Um, with GLC PCB is who I normally use. Um, from my understanding, you just need to be careful and specify the size of the actual stencil that you wish or the extra material around it otherwise you're going to end up with something which is a4 size i think uh unexpected mate i had, had that a few times with his so this kind of works as a stock fix but you've just maybe just got to accept that if you're doing a 3d printed you're going to have to go back and retouch up some connections um 
in retouching up the connections is probably normally my first port of call if a board isn't um, doing what it should be. Um, so yeah, that'll stop you getting the, the dry joints. Um, one other issue that I ran into recently was, well, I had two issues, um, but one of them was with the thermistor. Now, what I did was I've done the first board I ever did. I hand soldered, where, where we go. Um, and you'll notice the thermistor's here and I've just two little stubby wires and then just clipped them at the back that works great but that's only going to measure the temperature here and then you're going to have your um, power resistor here so really you're going to measure the temperature of the air around the power resistor now the idea was really to measure the battery temperature so what I did do was um, same as a few others have done was to mount it from the back of the board so then it's just poking out here little bit of heat shrink so that the two don't short out um, and then that on the 18650 pack it could just slide in between ideally now on mine there wasn't a huge gap so what's happening is that it's getting bent down not the end of the world it's still pressing against the batteries but if you're troubleshooting and if you're over time moving things around if this gets bent back bent back you get a bit of fatigue there in the metal and it'll snap off and that's what I had on one of mine and didn't realize um, and without that done because that's connected to the reset pin then you're basically going to end up with nothing working on that board um, you're not be able to see anything at all so that's one to keep an eye out um, you can it's a toss-up between whether you will do the um, which way you want to do it you, your call on that uh, but that's one to look out for the other issue I had was with the plug-in and unplugging of cables um, it'll depend on the connector you get but with these ones um, there's nothing actually securing it to the board so technically you can bend that back and in my orientation it's like this so then they're up high so then when you're trying to pull them in and out you're doing it by the cable which is the worst way to do it quite often nothing you know um, not a hand holding that board and you're getting a bit flex and that connector had bent, I hand bent it down, but I didn't visually inspect the board. And then I didn't realize that actually the power um, connectors for the positive and negative had actually just clean snapped off. And the data lines in the middle were connected, but the other two were clean snapped off. So that's one just to keep an eye on. And in my case, it happened on my first board, which then, because the daisy chain together, that rendered the whole string of BMS boards um, useless and not recording any data and it took me a little while to, to track that down um, because where the BMS is out in the garage and it, it, it's up a little bit high I'm reluctant to pull it all apart every time there's an issue but I did have to um, in the end do that and, and pull them out um, so yeah so it's always worth keeping an eye on things like that and the last one um, for those of us in colder climates um, or for just getting through the winter one huge thing to check out for is the resistor that you've used in R4 now Adam Welch did a great video on this and he's got all the maths in there so I'll just link to his video that'll be far easier I'll put a link up here where is somewhere oh, where's your finger I'll put a link up there and down in the description but that's one way if you use a 10k resistor for R4 um, if you get down to five degrees or thereabouts close the board will go into kind of reset loop um, because that's tied to the the reset pin just because the number of pins that Stuart had available so moving that to 20k um, will make it around about zero so you've still got to keep an eye on it in very cold climates but then you don't want to be using a power wall when it's below zero anyway you're going to cause issues in the cells but that is one that makes a huge difference in the UK especially um even just a couple of weeks ago um one of the boards had issues and it had the 10k resistor on and that was purely down to that and i must confess i hadn't paid attention at the time when adam had done his video and fully took in the gravitas of how much of a change it made but once those were swapped out rock solid no issue at all um and the power walls working great as it is so um oh and last one is if you 
working on these boards, I would highly advise you try and get them working inside on a smaller capacity um, set of cells. Um, and so it's handy just to create a test rig. Um, I got two of these, um, which can hold individual 18650s and just a set the connectors that I showed earlier on with a two millimeter pitch. Um, and I've got a second one of these with four on just because I'm working in 7S. And that means you can hook up your full set of string of BMS boards um, in a nice warm environment inside, get everything working, you know, pinned down, and then you can move it outside. And it, it's probably best leaving it even inside on a, for a couple of days on that little test rig and it'll just grand, gradually run the cells down but that's not the end of the world if you just keep an eye um, and you'll be able to see you know any balancing kicking in and, and things like that as well um, and you can manually put in a lower capacity cell and you can just test that the, the the balancing kicks in and also it's good to do that on every single board um, just to check that the LEDs are the right way around which is something which SMD LEDs it's so easy to have them the wrong way around um, so yeah so that's probably about it for today um, I did make notes and I had a list but it still felt a little bit higgledy piggledy but I hope that helps some people um, and you know can put you on the right track if you're having issues give you some things to to check for but uh, thanks very much guys um, and catch you next time